Hi. Back in August, I walked past an abandoned restaurant. I could tell it's once been beautiful, been well kept, that people would have been laughing and eating and drinking and making memories there together. But sadly now it was disused and there were broken parts to it and it looked like it was frozen in time. I clearly saw in the spirit that there was an enemy strategy meeting going on and that when I walked past praying and worshipping, which I was actually doing in the physical, uh, they looked up and stopped what they were doing. And even at the presence of one praying, worshipping believer, they stopped. See, I believe that there's an enemy occupation of abandoned places. We're in danger of subtly allowing the enemy to creep into the places in our lives and spaces in our lives which were once dedicated to God and to the worship of our King. Just to be clear, I'm not sensing, certainly not sensing that we should be going back to the old. I'm not making a statement about buildings, bricks and mortar, but what I am sensing is that the Holy Spirit would love us to take back with his help what the enemy may have stolen from us so that we're able to go into the new and all that he has for us. I felt that the attack on community and hospitality that has been apparent in this season needs to be counteracted and the church needs to lead the way. We mustn't be discouraged by what the enemy has delighted in as we've not been able to gather together in person. But listen to the Holy Spirit who will continue to show us how to be a community of believers who can still show hospitality and love to the wider community. What the enemy has occupied, King Jesus will take back for the kingdom. And again, I was reminded of Psalm 23 verse five. He will prepare tables before us again in the presence of our enemies. He will anoint our heads with oil. I believe that the oil of joy and gladness and our cups will overflow again. As I noticed the place looked like it was frozen in time, God reminded me of a powerful scene from Narnia, the line in the witch in the wardrobe that was written by C.S. Lewis, of course, where Aslan breathes on the frozen creatures and the people and they come back to life. And a similar scene was playing out in my mind. So many creatures have been frozen in stone by their enemy and seemingly no longer had life, if you remember that scene in Narnia. However, when their king showed up and breathed on them, their life was restored and they were able to move again. Not only did they come back to life, but they immediately formed this big army. They were part of an army and were called straight away into action. And there was so much joy and a sense of purpose. Where once there was life, I believe that people may have been frozen. I sense that God will breathe over us and recommission us if we're willing. Fear, circumstance, apathy and other enemy tactics were amongst those that were keeping people frozen, I believe. But the Holy Spirit will breathe and the thawing will take place. There will be a great thaw instead of a great freeze. Another great C.S. Lewis quote that some of us have been quoting to each other for encouragement at the moment and I thought fit perfectly with this word is this wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight at the sound of his roar sorrows will be no more when he bears his teeth winter meets its death and when he shakes his mane we shall have spring again amen I also believe that the Holy Spirit will breathe on those who haven't yet met Jesus that they will receive new life and be discipled along the way as they join in with others of us in the army and they will join the kingdom's cause. I felt led to Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 10 which many of us have been considering and praying into in this season. I'll read it now. The hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, 
prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise and a rattling sound and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and the tendons and the flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet. I felt that this again confirmed that God would breathe on us, that those who perhaps have felt like we we're unable to move forward or felt stuck or even paralyzed, that God will breathe life into us again and he will lead us for his cause. Again, I knew that what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn for good. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I was excited again in this Ezekiel passage to read that those who came to life became a vast army, as with the scene that C.S. Lewis was depicting as well. Why an army, I asked. Jesus has of course already defeated the enemy, defeated evil and death itself on the cross. We know the end of the story, don't we? However, part of our purpose is to take our place in the King's army, to fight the enemy who still has a hold on this world and together to take back territory for God's kingdom with his help, of course. I saw again people joining an army that looked really similar to a familiar Narnia scene as well, where they were advancing, holding up their flags, clearly depicting who their king was. And then others joined in too, as word spread that Aslan was on the move. You see, our king, the king, is on the move. He will breathe on us again, bring a vast army to life, and we will advance against our enemy, who is trying to steal spiritual territory. We need to determine not to allow his rightful place to be taken in our lives. We need to commit to the kingdom's cause, live as a welcoming kingdom community, and we must tell others of the life he gives. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And my friend Susie McGiven has written a song to go with this prophetic word, which I hope we can sing and pray and prophesy together. Hope you enjoy it now.